Hello YouTube and YouTube subscribers. Um, today I'm going to be doing a species profile on the mosquito fish, and particularly the western mosquito fish, also known as the gambusa, and the uh, proper scientific name is gambusia affin affinis. Now, um, interestingly, one of the main ways people have gained gambusa is that they buy feeders guppies, and mixed in with the feeders guppies are some gambusia, and if you look at these guys, they look basically like a female guppy. Except, uh, well, colorless female guppy. And one big way to differentiate them from a female guppy is to look at this, look at their caudal fin. As you can tell on the caudal fin and on the dorsal fin, the gambusia has the little spectacles. Colorless guppies don't really have that. And of course, in the slides, I'll make a comparison video. Now, this is a live bearer. And since it is a live bearer, when the family Posciliidae, it has the typical sexual dimorphic traits most of the Posciliates have. Um, in this species, neither gender is colorful, but the male does have a gonopodium, and the female has a fan-shaped anal fin. Also, the female develops a gravid spot when she's heavily pregnant, like the fish in this video. Now, there's also another fish called mosquito fish within the same family, and that is the Formosa Liberia. Bear, which looks quite a bit different. These guys are extremely small. This uh, species here, the Formosa Liberia, or also the least killifish, or just the other mosquito fish. Uh, usually that doesn't grow to be an inch long. Well, this one here tends to be about 1.6 to 2.5 inches. Females being a larger gender by a significant amount. Generally speaking, the aquariums are going to be smaller than that size I give. Those tend to be maximum size. Usually you're probably going to see about 1.5 inches for females and probably 1 inch for males. Now, this is a heavily, heavy, heavy breeding fish. Um, some, some of the... Uh, Info that I read about them was that they can actually breed at four weeks uh, And that's probably under optimal conditions also Is that females they can breed at four weeks, which is a bit quicker than guppies. Guppies usually take about six to eight weeks and The males I'm not sure but I assume the males might be able to start breeding pretty early also because they're smaller And you don't really need to mature to reproduce. You don't really need to grow to a large size to reproduce now Although a gambusa is really similar to a guppy, in terms of behavior, it's not. These guys are mean little fish. They're very aggressive, and they're also uh, bosterous, and they tend to bully other fish. They also like to nip fins of other fish also. And when you keep them in groups, which is highly recommended, or else they become really shy, is in groups they tend to have a pecking order that's constantly in flux, and they tend to bicker amongst each other. The males fight a bit too, and then they chase each other and all that. They're just a big, bosterous, group living posciliate. And because of this bosterous, fin nippy, aggressive nature that they have, this is not a community fish at all, despite being tiny. Um, because of the fin nipping, they'll attack your slower moving larger fish, and then they'll bully your smaller, peaceful fish. So do not keep these in the community tank. Probably, I wouldn't even recommend keeping these guys actually at all, because they have no advantage whatsoever over the guppy except for when it comes to uh, water parameters. Unlike guppies which need hard water, which need generally need hard, hard basic water, uh, these mosquito fish they can live in acidic soft water unlike guppies. So pH requirement is usually about 6 to 8 and the hardness is 5 to 30 which means they can live in very soft water to very hard water. And the temperature requirement is 18 to 27 degrees meaning that they do not need a heater. And they can actually go lower than that because they are found in some parts of the states where the seasonal temperatures do drop down. And I think usually when the temperatures drop down below 18 degrees, these guys, they stop breeding and they tend to reproduce less at milder temperatures also. Now, in terms, well, as I stated before, in terms of water parameters, nothing too uh, difficult about these guys. But I'm going to go up front and say I would not recommend the uh, mosquito fish at all. And another thing about them is in some parts of the states you can collect them wild. I wouldn't recommend doing that because there's a bunch of different species and some of them are endangered. And also this thing is a notorious invasive species throughout the world. So uh, do not dump these if you have them uh, in any neotropical or even tropical climate because these guys become invasive in South America, Africa, and Australia. You know, initially they were actually brought there to control mosquito populations, which they are good at. The only problem is they also like to eat the eggs of other fish, and they tend to outcompete other fish for resources. Meaning that from a 
conservational standpoint, rather than bringing in the mosquito fish to reduce mosquito populations, it would have been better just to promote the population of the native fish. Now, as for this, there will be some more slides in the video, in later parts of the video. But this mosquito fish, I just cannot recommend it. It's a terrible, low aggressive, low fish. If you want to set up something for breeding, like say for example, you want a 10 or 20 gallon tank that you want to grow feeder fish in, this might be a bit better than the gut before that, simply because they have a bit higher output rate. But other than that, I wouldn't recommend the mosquito fish for any community tank whatsoever. So thanks for watching. Please rate, comment, and subscribe.